Hello, greetings again and today what we're going to be doing. Uh, I've got a real treat here. I've got this horrible looking integral, uh, the uh, definite integral. This is a five star question if you're familiar with my uh, my rating of questions. And I just want to say how uh, where to find this first of all. This particular integral you're going to find on the booklets in my website of course mandasmas.com booklets standard topics integration structured exam questions and uh, why am i doing this integral today i was um, i just written the solutions to one of my, uh, my spx uh, papers and i was doing the solution to paper k and i have included this particular question in the in the in the paper and uh, it's quite fresh in my mind so uh, i'm gonna go through it uh, today uh, Let's have a little uh, look at this. First of all, where do we start with this? Uh, it's a five star question. It's not going to be an easy um, interval to do. We have to kind of like uh, expect uh, quite advanced techniques with this particular one. All right. Uh, the first thing that cuts my eye is this denominator one plus a squared quantity. And it, there is some kind of relationship between this one and the argument of the log. So I'm going to want to do there, I'm going to try first of all to match this to a standard trigonometric identity. So let's going to say 1 plus, uh, we're going to write this as 2x, my thing is letting me down, I'm going to have to dump this uh, black uh, marker. So let me just uh, use the blue one, which I'm sure it doesn't even show as blue to you guys, probably looks as uh, black as well. Uh, 1 plus 2x all squared so this is what I'm looking at and I'm gonna match it with the identity that's gonna metric one one plus tan squared theta which of course gives me a sec squared of course okay um, so I'm gonna use a substitution this is gonna be my tan so 2x is equal to the tan of theta and just a piece of warning, just in case you might be wondering why am I taking principal arguments or sometimes it's questions like this, you might be wondering why am I ignoring the, the, the negative uh, answer or something like this. The actual substitution is not actually this. The actual substitution is theta is equal to the arc tan of 2x, which is a one-to-one -one function. Okay. So let's have a think now uh, what is going to happen when we put that in there. Of course, the limits will change. This will change. And this argument will be rather nice as well because we're going to have a 1 plus tan theta in there. Let's do all these things at once. Uh, not once, one at a time. Uh, the dx, first of all. Uh, 2 dx, that's this bit there. Equal differentiated tan. That gives me sec squared theta d theta. In the limits, when I have uh, x is equal to a half, and when I have x is equal to zero, it's actually easier if I look at this line, uh, the arctan of uh, two times a half, arctan of one is pi over four, and the arctan of zero is of course zero. So let me just uh, take these things out of the way and start transforming my integral a bit at a time. So what happens to this one? Um, zero gets mapped to zero, pi over four on the top. And uh, on the top, the log one plus uh, 2x is now tan theta. That's actually a lot better than I thought. And my denominator, of course, I matched it to be 1 plus tan squared theta, which is sec squared theta. And what an amazing bit of luck. My dx is sec squared theta divided by 2. So I'm going to write it as a half sec squared theta d theta gone. And uh, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to try to economize with the space uh, on the board tonight because I don't know how long um, this will be. So let me just, uh, rather than rewriting it, let's uh, get rid of these items. I don't need a denominator anymore. Looks a bit odd. 
has left it, but it's a half there and a D theta here. So definitely progress now so far. We started with this particular version and now we have a much, look, much better looking version. Well, I hope. Now, what do we do next is the question. Uh, now, um, when I when I wrote the solution earlier on today for this particular integral, I chose to go one particular way uh, because it appeals better to me and my way of thinking. It's like when I look at this, that's what's going through my head. But uh, there is another version which I did not put in uh, in uh, in my solution, and I don't think I've actually added it in here either. So I'm going to show you. So that's a bonus, a second approach to this, or I hope uh, I, I, I can. Um, this is what's going through my head there. Uh, and sometimes you have to improvise, you have to try things and just if you hit a brick wall, you go back and you try something else. And then uh, if that doesn't work, you try something else. And if it doesn't work, then you cry and you're very, very sad and uh, uh, you just accept that uh, the, the integral at you. So um, the first thing I want to do for something that has a tan, I don't like tans. Let's move it into sines and cosines. So a half log. 1 plus sine theta over cos theta, d theta limit 0 to pi over 4. And uh, let me just uh, tidy this particular argument a little bit more. 0 to pi over 4, the log of cos theta plus sine theta, the whole thing over cos theta, d theta. And now this requires a little bit of ingenuity to see the next step. Okay, it comes with practice. I mean, you might think uh, uh, this is the kind of thing that you can see from day one to day two. The answer is no. Uh, it will take a lot of commitment and a lot of practice with hard looking um, uh, items such as this to start seeing things or trying things. Uh, so this is where I'm concentrating. Uh, you know when you're doing your R transformations in um, just ordinary trigonometry when you're having sine theta plus cos theta is equal to the charge of an equation is equal to I don't know to 0 0.7 something stupid like this uh, and I see people doing R blah 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 and cos theta minus alpha you need to recognize a few forms and you should be able to do that by inspection this is a common one and another one is it is minus, of course. Another common one is a sine theta plus or minus cos theta, uh, and where one of them has a root three. Doesn't matter which one. These are very special, they're, they're, they're exact forms, and you need to recognize them. So um, let me just, uh, for this particular one, I'll explain to you why I need by recognizing them. First of all, I'm gonna split this log now. So that's the first uh, item. Uh, half, inside the integral still, 0 to pi over 4, um, log of cos theta plus sine theta, and then I've got minus the log of cos theta, d theta. And if you want to put a bracket there, I can put the bracket. This is where all the action is, and this is what uh, we need to, to look at now. Uh, what's this next bit? 0 to pi over 4 log open a big bracket um, i'm going to factorize out of this quantity a root 2. Uh, why a root 2 is because i've seen it before i've done it before and this is the standard routine so open a bracket so that will leave me inside what's right there cos theta times 1 over root 2 plus we got the sine theta times the 1 over root 2 again and I'm gonna run out of space here I haven't lectured for quite a while guys and I'm very bad at uh, making use of a over whiteboard uh, very bad planning it just takes quite some skill actually to do that minus Oh, for crying out loud, log cos theta, d theta, just about managed to squeeze it in. Now, why do I do that? Because these two quantities are in fact 
the sine of pi over 4 or the cos of pi over 4. They're both equal to 1 over root 2, or if you rationalize it, root 2 over 2 is exactly the same thing. So let's clear the board a little bit, make a little bit of space. So these items, as I said, they're very special. And in the next line, I'm going to replace them with their equivalent. Uh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to be writing any lower. I go back, back as well as anything else. So I'm going to remove these things now. And instead, I'm going to put their equivalent in sine and cos. We have a choice, really. Depends on whether you want to do a cos uh, theta minus uh, pi over 4 or you want to do a sine theta plus pi over 4. Uh, let's go for a cos this time. So this is the cos of pi over 4. That was the 1 over root 2 that was there. But the, si the sine of pi over 4 is exactly the same. So sine pi over 4. So far, so good. So eventually, this particular item will be the cos of theta minus pi over 4. Still inside, we've still got a root 2 at the front. Actually, I'm not going to put the root 2 there because the curly bracket only points at this item. So I'm going to just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the board at the top. go so dot 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 equal half 0 to pi over 4 we got the log of root 2 uh, and this item has been reduced to cos theta minus pi over 4 I missed anything and this other log at the end I didn't have to split the log but it's actually much nicer to see if I have it as two separate things rather than just working within the denominator of the argument of a log which is going to be uh, quite disgusting really log cos theta d theta what happens next well quite obvious what happens next we are going to probably split this log why am I going to split this log? Why don't I put them together just yet? Is this ugly thing I really want to get rid of? Uh, this log, uh, uh, it's not log, but it's square root of 2. So I'm going to do it in steps. So hopefully you can follow this. Easier. So half. 0 to pi over 4 log of root 2. Multiplication implies addition. Multiplication, the argument implies addition of log so that's the log of the cos of theta minus pi over 4 boom boom minus the log of cos theta d theta like that and i got three logs so what i'm gonna do on my next line is split the integral here so i got this constant and on the second integral I'm going to recombine these two logs together. So it says maybe I'll try. So I've got 0 to pi over 4. Uh, the log of root 2. Which probably I will write it as 2 to be a half. And pull a, uh, another half at the front. Uh, d theta. Plus. Don't forget the a half at the front. Of this. This item. And now I'm combining these two logs again. Log of argument cos theta minus pi over 4 over the cos of theta d theta. It looks like it's getting worse, doesn't it, this particular integral. So let's uh, go up the top, clear up a little bit of space. These are rather long and uh, Quite fun to do, really. They're not that bad. Uh, I'm going to speed up things with this item. Uh, the square root of 2, I'm going to write to the a half. The a half, I'm going to move out the front to a quarter. So this will be, and the log 2 cannot come out anyway. So we got a quarter log 2 integrated. So that would be basically 
a one left in there, defeat that from zero to pi over four. So that's another times uh, pi over four. So that is this integral gone, kaput. Let's get him out of the way. And now we've got the menacing looking quantity in there. Plus a half integral zero to pi over four. I'm gonna put limits here. I'm steep at times. Pi over four. And now I'm going to look at it and uh, consider my next move. Okay. Now this next move is the hardest one probably within the integral. Um, um, in a question like this you really ought to be given a, some kind of hint uh, when you come to something like this because if you're approaching it in this particular method I mean this is going to be quite a nightmare. In fact I'm just looking at this and I'm just uh, thinking of making up a, a, another question because this is special and uh, sometimes that's how you make a question you just uh, in you're in the middle of something something beautiful arises and you just take it yourself I'm gonna make something uh, based on that um, I'll tell you what it would have been a good clue here to actually um, do the question I'm gonna put up here you know this integral that we're trying to find they could have said to us show that this integral is in fact equal to pi log 2 over 16 and you would have reached that stage and you would have said now what and then hopefully you would have realized wait a second that's exactly that what does that mean well it clearly means this is zero how do I know it's zero and how can I prove it's zero uh, this is how we can actually do it. And again, what, if, I, if for example, somebody experienced, suppose that he's likely doing step or he's done loads of work with advanced uh, techniques like this, would have been working along the following lines. Okay, we're gonna look for a symmetrical domain. So uh, we're gonna look at the limit zero to power of four, and I'm gonna use another substitution. I'm gonna do it on the side here. So I'm gonna try to map in order to bring this to a symmetrical domain, I uh, need to bring this down by pi over eight. So it's gonna to go to pi over eight and this to minus pi over eight. So the substitution, I need to shift the theta. Step on my own laces here. Shouldn't be an accident, it's all cramped here. Uh, I'm gonna use a substitution. Theta is equal to, um, let's say another variable. Let's use a, an angle variable, phi plus pi over 8, or phi is equal to theta minus pi over 8. So if you look at your limits, when theta is pi over 4, here, pi over 4 minus pi over 8, the pi over 4 will be mapped to pi over 8. And when you're putting zero in here for your theta, then this takes you to minus pi over eight. So my rationale was a symmetrical to create a uh, my rationale was to create a symmetrical domain. But the question is why? Uh, I'm thinking of all the even functions really. So uh, the the theta and the d phi there is uh, the, the the straight swap is just the translation really of the function. The theta is equal to d phi, and let's see how this uh, changes things. Okay, this one is just a tidy up, a quarter, uh, this is the answer basically that we got up there. Pi log two over 16 plus a half. And my integral now transforms to pi over eight on the top, minus pi over eight at the bottom. And I'm gonna have the log of cos, uh, uh, putting theta there will give me uh, pi uh, 5 plus pi over 8 minus pi over 4 so that's theta minus not theta phi 
minus pi over 8 on the numerator and on the denominator the theta is 5 plus pi over 8 and that the theta just sw swaps to a d phi so now I have a symmetrical domain so it suffices to show that this particular function is odd if it's odd on a symmetrical domain is boom finished and the answer of course will reduce to what we're trying to show so um, how I'm going to do this I probably need a little bit more space that's the last thing really for this integral uh, I'm going to do it up here uh, I'm going to write it as a function in function notation so we got f of phi is just the integrand that I'm seeing there log cos Phi minus pi over 8 over cos of, let me close the bracket there, very bad habits. Supposed to be teaching, not being sloppy myself. Pi over 8, great stuff so far. And now in order to show that this is odd, I'm going to try f of minus phi. This is standard A level stuff. Long. cos of minus phi minus pi over 8 over cos of phi plus pi over 8. You see, that's how you make questions. You know, I was saying earlier on, um, how do you make some questions? See, this thing here has got nothing to do with... Uh, directly, uh, well, it is part of the question with odd and even functions, but I can actually take this item now and I can make a question suitable for A level and say uh, f of x, so not phi, f of x is the log of cos x minus pi over 8 over cos of x plus pi over 8 and prove that this particular function, for example, is an odd function. So it would have come from a question like this. Okay, where, where are we there? I've made a mistake already because I'm just chatting. Uh, I didn't replace this with a minus. Some of you must be screaming, change the minus there. Uh, and now it's very, very easy. I don't want to be writing a lot of stuff. Cos is an even function itself. So this will go plus. It's exactly the same for a cos. And the same thing at the bottom. So, But at the bottom, careful. It's not changing selectively what I want. It will go, this was a minus, it will go plus. But this will go minus. And now I can use the properties of logs, which says I can actually flip the argument of the log. So if I flip it, so it goes, oh, this comes to the top, so it's minus, and this goes plus, this will go to the minus one. And then again, properties of logs, shift that minus one to the front. And then if you look at the definition of f of i, which is up there, this it's exactly what we got but with a minus so we got minus f of phi which means this is a not function which means this is gone and fully justified and therefore the answer to the integral is pi log 2 over 16. Uh, they really have to give you some kind of clue to actually see that although for this particular question, it's only you need a clue if you follow some this particular approach, uh, because I feel this particular integral can be done uh, in a slightly different way, which is more standard for a lot of other integrals, which uh, Cambridge in particular likes those ones. So I just want to show you a different approach. Uh, I know the video is going to get a little bit long, but, uh, and this particular one is a bonus because I don't have it in my solution. I didn't put it. Uh, let's have a... Some, so the, the initial substitution you still have to, to do. So I need to take it from this particular stage because I saw it, but uh, I chose uh, to, to do it this particular way. Um, you know, we substituted the tan to the original integral and I don't quite remember what we got, but uh, we got all the work you see here, so that's good news. So uh, this would have gone zero to pi over four and uh, 
you could have a half as well there. We had a half at the front, a half, and it was a log of one plus tan. I think I just need to trace it very quickly in my head. Uh, one plus tan theta inside the log, the half, which the half comes from, comes from this dx. Half sex squared, cancel the sex squared at the bottom. Yeah, I think we are at this stage. And if you recall what I've done, uh, the way I just showed you, I switched into sines and cosines, put into a single fraction, then I created in harmonic form some kind of R transformation. Um, and then all sorts of uh, difficult things uh, appeared, difficult to see, of course. Um, but we managed to do it and we got that particular answer. Now I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. Uh, I'm going to define this integral to be called i. So those who have seen techniques like that, you probably know where this is going. And I'm going to use another substitution from this particular line. And the substitution that I'm going to use, I'm going to write it on this side of the board. It's going to be, I go 0 to pi over 4. So again, I'm going to use a 5. And phi is pi over 4 minus theta, which is equivalent to theta is equal to pi over 4 minus phi. So this time the, um, the d theta is the negative of d phi or the other way around. And the limits, of course, will swap now. Just check it that it does happen. Theta, pi over 4, theta is equal to zero, gets mapped to uh, the pi over four, theta pi over four, pi over four minus pi over four is zero, so the phi becomes zero. And when the theta is zero, the phi goes to pi over four. So let's observe what's just taking place there. Uh, oops, mistake already. It's pi over 4 at the bottom, 0 at the top, half log 1 plus tan theta. Theta is now phi plus pi over 4. And my d theta swaps into a minus d phi. I'm going to use this minus to take the limit back to the original configuration. So this is going to go back to pi over 4 to 0. So I just need to tidy this tan theta plus pi over 4. Um, this is equal to 0 to pi over 4 half log 1 plus Compound angle for tan, that is the tan of phi plus the tan of pi over 4. I've made a mistake here, it should be a minus there, surely. Theta, where's the theta? Theta is uh, pi over 4 minus phi. I do apologize, guys. Late day again, and I'm doing silly mistakes, but I saw it. So let me just clear that and do the substitution correctly. This theta is pi over 4 minus pi. I wrote it. I wrote the wrong thing down. I'm going to put it in uh, red for the correction. So it's pi over 4 minus phi. So back to my compound angle. Tan pi over 4 minus tan phi over 1 plus tan pi over 4 tan phi that's inside the log, so that's up to here. And I'm, I'm going to close that on the bracket there. Sorry. D theta. Not D theta. D phi. Sorry. And I'm going to tidy up. 0 to pi over 4. By the way, this on the SBX paper is not calculator, by the way. Yeah, this is calculators for engineers and people that sell potatoes in the market. Mathematicians don't use a calculator. Don't need one. So that's a half. Log. The tan of pi over 4 is 1, so this is 1 minus tan of phi over 1 plus, that's another 1, 
count of i, d phi. Uh, I don't know if that's visible on the video, so I'm gonna risk it. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm writing here. Zero to the power of four half. Tidy up this into a single fraction. So put it into a single fraction. This will give me uh, a one plus tan phi on the numerator plus one minus tan phi. The whole thing over one plus and phi plus argument d phi. This cancels and I'm gonna need to go to the top because now I can't even see myself what I'm doing. Uh, so, zero. Oh no, that's from the line above, sorry. 0 to pi over 4, a half. And this will now have a log with an argument of 2 over 1 plus tan phi. And then we begin to smile because we begin to see light at the end of the tunnel. I think this approach, if you're familiar with, is a lot... Uh, quicker, a lot more effective, it just kills the interval and you don't need to spot all the even functions or anything like that. So, um, see this quantity here is the same thing, if only that was flipped somehow, blah blah blah, of course we can flip it, uh, but it's probably better if we just split the log this time. So, I'm going to write this as 0 to pi over 4, half log 2, Minus the half at the front, of course, log of 1 plus tan phi d phi. And now I'm going to split the integral. Let me just take this off. Um, this is going to give me the integral of a half log 2 between 0 and pi over 4 d phi minus the integral of a half log 1 plus tan phi d phi between the same limits. So far so good. And let's not forget, you need to see where, where we're heading if you haven't seen this before. Um, this is i, which is up there. And look here, I know that this is a dummy variable. Oh, I put theta there. If you let me, so d phi. This is exactly the same integral, identical, is same limit, same everything, except that this uh, phi, we call it x, is still the same answer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write i here, because that's all of these things I've done so far is equal to that. So i is equal to this little quantity here, and this particular integral, you're going to spare me and not let me just copy down. I mean, if you're taking notes or anything like that, please rewrite this again and just replace just this integral with i. And put an explanation where did that i came from. So what does that mean? Well, it means simply that two lots of my i, if I take the i's on the other side, is just simply this item. So 2i, if we integrate this, it's going to be, of course, a half log 2 integrated between 0 and just basically a constant 1 between 0 and pi over 4, which, of course, is just pi over 4, which, of course, will give us uh, pi log 2 over 8. And let's not forget, because we didn't get the same answer, over 16 but don't forget we've got 2 now on the other side so if we divide lastly the 2i lose this 2 from the left hand side and divide by 2 we're going to get pi log 2 over 16 which is of course what uh, we got the first time around and on that note because it's getting very late again I don't know how I manage every night every night who's laughing now with this integral yeah we, we just done it okay 
Till next time, I'll see you again. Okay, bye for now.